Welcome back to the SSR build series. Someone asked me in the comments if when it got to the point that I was removing the engine from this bike, I could slow it down and actually show the process because they were interested in doing a swap with one of these engines themselves. So they were curious to see how it's done. So I've decided that I'm gonna do sort of a how-to on removing this pit bike style of engine. And some of this will have to be a bit generalized because there are variances between the bike that you're removing it from, the exact engine, etc. But hopefully I can give you a good idea of most of the things that are involved in removing one of these engines. The first thing you'll want to do is disconnect the battery. In this case, my battery has been gone for a while now. But you don't actually have to remove the entire battery. All you really need to do is find the battery and locate the negative terminal. Some of them are color coded like this. You can see I've got black here and red here. Red being positive, black being negative. But most batteries should have a plus and a minus with a minus being the negative or the ground terminal. So just disconnect that. And make sure that you set this connection aside so it's not touching the battery. Secure it so that it cannot touch this terminal anymore. You can disconnect both terminals or you can remove the whole battery if you want to. I would suggest that you put the bolt back in place in the terminal because you don't want to lose the bolt or the nut that go in there. And a quick tip for that or for when you're reconnecting is that a lot of these bolts aren't actually long enough to reach and start. This one did. But if it's not, what you can do is take a small flat screwdriver and put it under the nut and then that will let you start it easier. Next you'll want to shut off the fuel supply to the carburetor. And exactly how you do that is going to depend on the bike and the carburetor. In this case you can see there used to be a fuel line here. I've worked on my gas tank and my stock gas tank is off now. But that would be where the fuel line came from the gas tank normally. And I've got a manual shutoff valve right here. It's already turned off but on and off. You would just turn that to the off position to stop fuel. You may have one in line. Again just turn it off. Sometimes you could have a vacuum operated petcock so whenever there's no engine vacuum the engine isn't running it shuts fuel off automatically whatever the case is you want to shut fuel off to the carburetor if for some reason you can't shut off the fuel supply you could also locate the outlet of your gas tank the hose coming off of that take that hose off and put it into a container so that it can drain a fuel safe container so that it can drain or you could take that hose and clamp it off there are actually fuel hose pliers basically or clamps and they have large plastic pieces so you don't damage the fuel hoses. You could even take something like a set of vice grips and put rubber across the jaws like an old hose. But the main thing is you just want to be able to clamp it off without cutting into the fuel hose. After you're sure that you've shut off the fuel supply the next thing that you want to do is drain the carburetor's bowl. That's the bottom part of the carburetor here. You should see at least an outlet if not a hose attached to it that will be for the bowl drain and somewhere near that is the float bowl drain screw usually this is mine and usually you just have to open that a little bit and if there's any fuel inside of the carburetor it will drain out of this hose and just let that keep going until fuel stops coming out once the fuel's done then close this up now you've got some choices if you're going to keep the same carburetor on the bike the easiest way to deal with the carburetor because you want to free that up from the engine would be to unbolt the carburetor from the intake. So you can see in this case I've got a bolt here and a bolt on the other side. I would just unscrew those bolts, take them out, and then I could move the carburetor aside. It would have all the cables attached and everything. You could even leave the fuel unattached if you want, though it's still a good idea to drain it like I've showed you before. You could also choose to leave the carburetor installed on the engine, so then you've got to free up the cables and anything else attaching the carburetor to the scooter. So the first thing would be the air box or air filter. In this case, this one that I got with this moped has never really attached very well. It's kind of a hardened up rubber and doesn't want to go on there. But usually it's just a clamp of some sort and then you can pull it off of the mouth of the carburetor. Then, if you haven't already removed your fuel line, you can go ahead and remove the fuel line. And now you've got two cables to deal with, sometimes just one. You'll definitely have a throttle cable and you may have a choke cable. I'm going to start with a choke cable just because it's right up front here. First thing I'll do, I can see that the actual cable goes into this bracket and then I need to unscrew this to free up the cable. Now I can take the cable out of there and then I just got to get the cable out of here. If you don't have a lot of slack in your cable then what you'll have to do is just move this lever to create some slack 
and you twist it around you can see there's a slot in the side of this until the cable itself lines up with that slot and then it slides out of the side and you're done with that now the throttle cable that should be coming into the top of the carburetor and it's usually a screw on cap so start by unscrewing that cap once that's off you can pull this up and out of the carburetor you're going to be pulling out the whole throttle valve assembly the slide at this point if you want the carburetor to go along with the engine you should be finished but just take another look around the carburetor make sure that none of these hoses and cables in the area are attached anywhere to the chassis so that they're free to be removed from the bike if i'm going to be leaving things open especially the inlet path like the carburetor or the intake itself what i like to do is stuff some sort of rag or paper towel something just to block off any open passages because i really don't want dirt and debris getting in there while i'm working on other things just make sure that whatever you stuff in there is not something you're going to forget about um, you don't want to go to fire up the bike and then suck it into the engine later if you're finished using the carburetor completely or if you just like to keep all of the components to the carburetor together what you can do is remove the cable from the rest of this assembly in this case it's very easy if you look at the slide here the throttle valve you'll see an opening all the way down the throttle valve all you have to do is push this slide up you'll see the cable can come out the bottom there and then pull it out of the side carefully make sure you don't lose anything then you can take off the spring and pull the cap and adapter off of the cable now you can reinstall this stuff into the carburetor for safekeeping start with the throttle valve or the slide notice that there's that slit look down inside the carburetor you'll see a nub or a kind of bump on one side and that's got to match up with where this is otherwise the slide won't go all the way down so you can kind of drop that in you may need to twist it a little bit to find it exactly there you go and then drop the spring in and then you can screw the cap back onto the carburetor just to give you another example that's a little bit different here is the setup from a Makuni VM28 carburetor these just have a groove on the side instead of the whole slit so you can't just pull the cable out of there so what you do is look inside of there and you can see there's a retainer so you've got to take the spring and just kind of bunch it up compress it a lot of times you can rest it on the side you can see in this case the retainer fell right out make sure you don't lose that the needle may also come out at this point so make sure you don't lose the needle and then if you look at this groove in here you can see there's a small section and then a big end here with a hole so just slide that cable over to that hole you may have to push down a little bit and then it should come out of there to reinstall this into your carburetor if you look at the retainer you'll see it's got a couple of tabs on it and those one of those will need to line up and fit inside of that slot down there so you'll just drop that into place and then you can drop that into your carb put the spring in and put the cap on just like the other one you can still remove the entire carburetor at this point i'll go ahead and remove it just to show you to cover all bases again it's just these two bolts on the intake Next, I want to remove the exhaust. I'll start by loosening up the header bolts or nuts. Then you should have one or a few bolts somewhere securing the weight of the exhaust to the chassis. In my case, this is the only one, so I'll loosen that up. I've still got the nut back here on the mount just tight enough that it's not going to fall off and it should secure the weight of the exhaust. So I'm going to support the front of the exhaust and go ahead and remove the two nuts for the header. And pull that down. And now I'll remove the nut back here, holding the exhaust so it can't fall. And I can slide this off. You may also want to check up here, make sure you don't have any gaskets stuck in there like that. Now I'm going to go around the engine and see what else is attached to the engine that's also attached to the frame. The first thing I see that's obvious is my spark plug wire and spark plug cap. So I'm just going to pop that off. Then I've got this hose here 
that attaches to my air box and that is a crankcase breather hose which the crankcase breather is back here and it's pretty hard to get to at the moment so I'm going to do it the easiest way and I'm going to remove this from my air box instead of trying to remove it from the engine right now. Next I've spotted a cable attached to the engine cases. This is a ground cable so I'm going to remove this bolt. Slide the cable off and then I'm going to put my bolt back in place. The stator wires come out of this side of the engine so you'll just trace those until you find a connector and then remove the connection. If your engine has a manual clutch then you'll need to remove the clutch cable. So start right by this bracket, you'll see there's a nut on either end, loosen those. And then I want to create some slack in there, so I'm going to go ahead and back this one all the way off. Then I can push it forward to put some slack into the cable. Now push this clutch lever toward the front of the engine or the front of the bike, that'll create more slack. And then you can slide the cable out of that end. You can see it's just a slotted piece there. Now back this nut all the way off and then you can move it so that the bare cable will come out. You can slide it out through this bracket here. If your engine has an electric start then you should have some kind of electrical connections to your starter motor. It can be as simple as one large starter cable here, a positive cable. Um, it may have a ground strap as well, a wire with a ring terminal on it. It could be just a connector. But whatever the case may be, make sure you get that disconnected as well. Now I've got all the electrical connections, the cables, the hoses, etc. off of the engine. But I've still got a chain attached and that has to come off before I can remove the engine. So I'm going to start by removing the two bolts on this cover. Normally when you remove the cover, you won't see these two sprockets up front. You're just going to see this drive sprocket in the back and the large chain going to the rear wheel. In this case, this is a moped engine, so it actually did have pedals and these are the sprockets for that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those so that we can see what's back there. And they've just got sur clips to begin with on the front here. And once those are off, I'm going to go ahead and slide these off of here. They've also got circlips behind those gears. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off because it's in my way for what I'll show you with this sprocket. The one down here, I'm just going to leave it in place. So this is more likely what you're looking at when you pull that cover off. Sprocket, you've got a retainer on that sprocket, and then of course the chain. So the easy way for most people to get the engine out of here, the quickest way to do it, is to remove this retainer, pull the sprocket off of that shaft, and then it's free from the engine. So you can see I've got two bolts here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen those up. And right now, this thing is a neutral. You can put it in gear or you can just grab the rear tire, hold it that way, and get those bolts out of there. Once those are out, you need to get this little clip off of here. So you just need to make sure it's lined up with the splines on the shaft and then try to slide it off of there. And then sometimes you will be able to slide this sprocket right off of this shaft. In this case, I don't know if I've got enough slack. There it goes. Okay. And that way the chain is free from the engine. Just take the sprocket out of there and you may want to put your bolts and retainer back in the sprocket so you don't lose it. If you don't have enough slack in the chain to remove it like I just showed you, if you go to the back wheel, you should see that you've got an adjuster on each side. If you back the nuts on the adjuster off, that will allow you to move the axle and of course the rear sprocket forward that puts slack into the chain and then you can try it again. Also, you can put enough slack in the chain that you can slip the chain over the front sprocket and take it off that way. 
And if you do mess with these, you got to remember that you've got to go back over them when you install the new engine or whatever you're doing when an engine goes back into it. But to be honest with you, you really should do that anyway. Every time you put an engine in, you should be checking the tension on the chain, making sure the wheel is straight, etc. So you should go over this anyhow. One more way to take the chain off easily is by utilizing the master link. That's this link right here. You can see it's got a clip on the outside. It's different than all the other links. And that's basically just an easy way for you to be able to take the chain apart without having to use a chain breaker tool or anything like that. To remove that, all you've really got to do is to get that clip off of there. You can see it's open on one end, closed on the other. What I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers, put this side of the pliers on the end of the clip, and this side of the pliers on this edge of the front pin, and use that to push the clip off. comes off like that. Then there's a plate behind that that you can just slide off of there. And then you can separate the chain. And once you've got the chain split apart like that, it's very easy to remove it. You may want to put your master link back into the chain to slide it over like that. Put the cap on there. And then you can get one of the pins in place. Kind of push it toward the other. There is a way, a proper direction to mount these. Um, you want the nose of this, the closed end, going with the direction that the chain is traveling. In this case, it really doesn't matter because I'm just storing it and trying not to lose it. And just like before, essentially, I'm going to use the pliers to push. This end is going to push on the back here. And this end is going to be holding this side of the pin up there. Now I've got everything off of the engine that I would actually have to remove before I could take it out of the frame. But most of these pit bike style engines mount their foot pegs, and in this case also the uh, side stand, to the bottom of the engine. You don't have to take it off right now, but it's a little easier to get to right now for me versus putting it up on the bench and flipping it on its side. So I'm going to go ahead and take the bolts out to remove my peg setup. Now I should be left with only this bolt and this bolt. That's the two bolts that actually hold the engine into the frame. I think on some pit bike models, I'm not certain, but I think they may use two of the holes in the bottom of the engine that I just showed you where my foot peg setup came off of as additional frame mounts. So make sure you check down there and just double, double check around the whole engine and make sure nothing else is connected. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these two nuts off of there. I'm gonna leave the bolts in place though. I'm going to try to remove this rear bolt first and leave the engine hanging from the top bolt. And you can try to tap it out. You're probably going to be better off to find a punch, or in this case I've got a screwdriver that's smaller than the bolt, and try to knock that through. Finally, I'm going to try to remove this top bolt basically the same way that I did with the other bolt, just knocking it through there. But when this bolt comes out, you absolutely must be ready to support the weight of the engine. Easy way to do that is to have a friend hold the engine while you remove the bolt or vice versa. If you don't have someone around and you're worried about it, I've seen people even with really heavy things like car transmissions stack up pillows underneath there so at least if it falls, it's not going to bust. Um, you could put a box of some sort or some kind of stand. There's all sorts of ways you could do it. But the main thing is, this is the last thing that's holding the engine in place. 
So it's going to fall to the ground if you're not holding on to it. So be careful when you do it. I'm gonna sort of cradle the engine, pull the bolt out, and then hopefully it's like, there we go. There you go, one frame minus an engine. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.